Foghorns are the most popular bass sounds in modern drum and bass. So today I'm going to show you three levels on creating the Foghorn starting with the beginner and all the way up to advanced. Each successive level gets nastier with more modulation and sound design options. If you're a beginner, master level one first and then gradually move up. All right, let's get into some Foghorns. So we're gonna be using Vital for our sound design today. It's a free synth which you can access. You can find it down in the links below. Also, a lot of people ask me, what is the skin I use for Vital? And I'm actually using a skin called Candy Cave. And I'll leave a link also down in the links below so you can download the skin. There's also a forum on the Vital page with everyone posting all their different skins. So if you want to check that out, I'll also leave that link so you can find your favorite skin. There's like over 200 different skins so you can uh, choose the one that fits your style. So for level one of Foghorn, all we need is two sine waves. The first sine wave will play the root note or the bass frequency. So let's just use the factory basic shapes. And that's playing our sub bass. Now, if you're here and clicking, all you need to do is go to envelope one and then increase the attack by a little, about 10 to 20 milliseconds. That should solve the problem. And then the second sine wave will play the upper harmonics of the foghorn. And essentially you want it to play at a higher note. So you can experiment with the notes. Typical numbers I like to choose are 12, which is one octave above, or 19, which is an octave and a perfect fifth up. And then we can do multiples of those two. So uh, instead of 12, you can go 24, which is two octaves up. And then if you want to go to a fifth, at seven, so that's 31. And then three octaves up would be 36. And uh, it's perfect fifth would be 43. And then finally you have 48, which is the highest note you can get it to. Let's just start a bit lower at about 31. And what you want to do is you want to modulate the volume of the oscillator too. So you bring the level all the way down so you don't hear anything. And then we'll use, be using LFO to modulate the volume. So you want this to be an envelope. So it only plays once. You don't want it to be an LFO where it repeats indefinitely. So choose envelope and then click on here and drag it over to level. So now it, fit, it kind of wubs in and out. Now you can play with the timing. Uh, I say either a quarter note or a half note or a bar. You'll just need to then adjust the shape. Adjust it to taste. I usually go for a shark fin shape which with a quicker rise. So like this or like this. And then the final step is to go into your effects and add distortion. And you can play with the drive amount to taste. That's pretty much it. That's level one of Foghorn. The variable thing is the key of Oscillator 2. So as I mentioned, it could be a number of keys. It could be 12. It could be 19. It could be 24. 31. 36. 43. 48. So the higher you go, the more screechy it sounds. I tend to like either 43 or 31. Those are your more typical foghorn sounds. By the way, all the presets I've created today can be downloaded in the links below. And then of course you can pl play with the shape to your taste. You can make it shorter by changing the length or frequency of the LFO. Of course, adjust the distortion to taste. 
So that's pretty much it. That's Foghorn level one. Here's a cool thing you can do with Vital. You can click on this button here. It'll bring the transpose snap. Essentially the bottom circles re represent your white notes and up here are your black notes. So this would be C and then your perfect fifth, would, which would be G, would be this note. So if you only want those two notes, you can click on this one and then click on this one. So now that when you shift the uh, pitch here, it'll only play the uh, blue notes. So, so notice as I increase the pitch, it latches onto the closest blue note. So you only hear the two notes that you want, which is the octave up or the perfect fifth. So that helps you just uh, find the key real quick. One more tip for a Foghorn level one, you can change the starting level of oscillator two, which will change the timbre of your Foghorn. Today's video is sponsored by Sonarworks. Do you ever find yourself lost in a mix? Perhaps your room has bad acoustics and your bass frequencies are totally off. And when you think you got the mix right, you play it on another system and it's completely out of whack. Or you may be mixing on headphones and you can't seem to get a flat response. Well, if you're having trouble with any one of those, then I recommend you guys to check out Sonarworks Reference ID. Sonarworks Sound ID Reference is a referencing software that comes with an optional calibration mic to help you calibrate your speakers or your headphones so you can get a balanced and neutral listening environment. So here's Sonarworks Sound ID Referencing software. Currently it's been disabled and this purple line shows you the frequency profile of my listening environment, which would be my room and my monitors. So you can see that the bass frequencies are kind of boosted and over represented here, as well as some of the mids and high end. So this is an issue I've had for the longest time, trying to figure out what is the right bass level in my mix. Now, oftentimes when I listen to my mix on other systems, my bass is out of whack. The reason for this is that the frequency profile is not flat. So what you do is you take the calibration mic that comes with sound ID and it measures the frequency response in your room and then it calibrates it or flattens the response. So this green line is the new response. As you can see, it's a bit flatter. And what I've noticed when listening to the mix now is that my highs and mids are balanced with my lows. So I can get a more neutral and authentic response when I'm mixing my tracks. Now this software can work directly in your DAW or outside your DAW if you want to use it to listen to music as well. So check this out. You can hear the before and after of the calibration. Listen closely to the bass and the overall frequency of the track. So this is with it disabled. Notice that it sounds more balanced and the low end kind of opens up. Before it was a bit muddier and a bit more confused than the bottom end. And the sub bass doesn't come through, but now listen to the sub bass. Total game changer. Now there's different options for Sonarworks. If you only need it for headphones, then you can get this cheaper version here. Also, if you have your own calibration mic, you can get this version. Or if you want to use their calibration mic, then you gotta pick up this one over here. So there's lots of options here. Just make sure if you have a calibration mic to check the website if it's one that's supported by Sonarworks. Many of my peers have recommended I get on Sonarworks. They talk about how life-changing it is to get that neutral sound in their listening environment. I neglected their recommendation for the longest time. Finally, I got it and haven't looked back. Finally, I can mix a track with confidence knowing that it will translate well across various stereo systems. And I know the bass will come through right. So if you're interested in checking out Sonarworks, you can learn more down in the links below.
All right, let's talk about level two of the Foghorn. So we're going to be building on what we did on level one. So this is what we had. So level two, you can experiment with other waveforms. With oscillator one, which is the sub bass, I would recommend either the sine wave. Also this wave, which is kind of a crushed version of the sine wave is nice. It just sounds a little more, you get more audible harmonics. It just makes the sub bass sound uh, fatter. Triangles, also another choice. Also sawtooth, if you want more frequencies. Uh, with this level, we do want more frequencies because we're gonna be employing the filter. Let's just stick with this one for now. Now with uh, oscillator two, you can experiment with more crazier waveforms since this is playing the top end. We can go with a sawtooth. We'll start with the sawtooth first and then we'll experiment with some other waveforms. Now the main thing with level two is there is more modulation. So on top of modulating the volume of oscillator two, we're going to be also modulating a low pass filter as well as the distortion. So let's turn off filter one and make sure both oscillator one and two is being sent to filter one. So that shaves off some of those uh, frequencies. And then we're going to be applying the same LFO to the cutoff of uh, filter one. So over here. So now that filter opens up as it follows this slope. Now that sounds a bit too much. So we can adjust the amount of the filter by this little clock knob here. This just controls how much LFO one modulates this cutoff frequency. So the lower, it only goes up that much. But if you make it higher, it goes all the way up. And we don't want that. Something like that is better. This uh, vertical knob is the resonance. So essentially, it just boosts that peak frequency. So it, essentially, it just makes it uh, sound squeakier. So if you want a, a squeaky foghorn, then you wrap this up. Okay. And then we're going to go into the effects and then we're going to be modulating the drive of the distortion. It's a, distortion is what does the magic for the foghorn. It crushes the waveforms and create those pleasant harmonics. So we're going to be applying LFO one also to this. Also, we can turn on some effects such as reverb. Just make sure you uh, add a low cut. You don't want to add reverb to the bottom end. So increase it up to like two to 400 Hertz. Let's make these both sawtooths. So you may have to tweak, for example, the frequency cutoff. That sounds more like it. We just brought the cutoff down. You may have to play with the LFO amount on this little clock icon as well. If we decrease the amount, that allows us to bring this cutoff starting point higher. And just like before, we can play with the pitch of oscillator two. As I mentioned earlier, with level two, you can experiment with some crazier waveforms of oscillator two, which is provides the harmonics or the mids of your foghorn bass. For example, let's go into the library and try some of these waveforms. <laughs> So the beauty of the wave tables is each one has a different character. So you have an infinite amount of variation of wave of foghorns here. Here's this really cool waveform I found called Pog Demon. This one results with some gnarly foghorns. Let's adjust the drive a little bit. Uh, sounding gnarly. One thing I didn't mention is this phase randomization parameter. I like to set this to zero. Essentially what this does is every time you hit the key, it'll sound the same when it's set to zero. With phase uh, randomization, it just randomizes the phase of the waveform. So every time you hit the key, it may sound 
slightly different, but I want it to sound the same every time I hit it. So make it 0%. All right, let's talk about level three of the foghorn. So level three, we can add more to the sound. For example, we can play with wave modulation. So using these icons here, we can adjust or distort the shape of our waveform. One I like to use is format. Notice how gnarly it sounds. You just got to find the sweet spots. And then with level three, we can introduce a third oscillator. We can turn on oscillator three and make it play an even higher pitch. So currently oscillator two is playing 31. So let's just turn on the global the tr uh, snap. And then this could play either thir 36 or 43 or 48. Now just make sure we bring the level all the way down and then modulate the volume just like level three. Bring in alpha one to the level of oscillator three. And then bring the pitch up. Now it's sounding really harsh right now because oscillator three is not being sent to filter one. So just turn on oscillator three under the filter. Notice how uh, gnarly that sounds. Let's try some other waveforms for oscillator three. A go-to would be the sine wave. It just sounds nice. Make sure phase randomization is zero once again. You may have to adjust the level start point of oscillator three. Another cool shape I found earlier was this one called angry electric dog. Of course, you can shape it a little more. You can add EQ if you want to uh, adjust the frequencies of the foghorn. You can add compression if you like, multiband compression that is. I find it get, makes it really harsh, so I actually don't play with the multiband compression as much, but I know some producers like it. Of course, explore the different filters. You can try, instead of 12, you can try the 24 pull. And just increasing the cutoff. Sounds even gnarlier, nastier. The nasty wavetables or filters are nice as well. And just like with oscillator three, we can play with some of the wave shaping options format. It's all about playing and finding the sweet spot for these uh, knobs. And for the sub bass, I actually like it more with the sine wave. So let's bring it back down. I just brought the format back to normal setting. Some other cool features. What I like about Vital is you have all these assortment of other wave distorting shapers here. Shepherd tone is really interesting. combination of these two you can create some pretty gnarly sounds here's the level three foghorn i just adjusted it a little bit so oscillator two is playing 31 oscillator three is playing 43 and i actually left oscillator three out of the filter so it sounds a bit more open this way as long as you keep it the sine wave it just gets a bit messy, messy if you use some of the other waveforms with oscillator 3 when it's outside the filter. So if you're using other shapes other than a sine wave, then you want to put it back into the filter. 
I kind of like thinking of the sine wave. It just adds a, an upper harmonic to the foghorn. Here's a really cool trait you can do. If you go into the LFO 2, which will operate as an indefinite uh, LFO, we can pull this. If we pull this into this little clock icon here, essentially what it's doing is it's modulating the uh, clock amount of the LFO 1. So watch what happens. You kind of get a wobbling foghorn. Pretty sick. Let's play with the cutoff. Now, I've just brought Oscillator 3 back to uh, the filter. We might have to adjust the level to get that sound to come through. Oh, and that's sounding sick. You may want to adjust the clock value of level 2. Now you got a wobble foghorn. With the wobble foghorn, I would probably make LFO 1 even slower, maybe 2 bars. Or you can change the attack all the way up like this. Ooh, that's pretty sick. Dirt. If you want to take your level 3 foghorn to another level, you can add additional effects after the distortion stage and before the reverb stage. For example, we can add a phaser. Or we can add a flanger or flanger. Flanger actually has a nice effect. It makes it sound really fat. Wow, that is dirty. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh, there we go. Gross. So let's have a review of the foghorns we just created. Here's level one with the two sine waves. Here's level two where we take it up a notch and we we change up the waveforms and we, and we add modulation to the filter and distortion. And here's level three where we take it up to the max. We're using three waveforms and some crazy LFO modulation, including some uh, wobble modulation with LFO 2. Oh my gosh. All right, now that we have three levels of foghorn, I just had this rhythm I whipped up real quickly. I'm using the kick and snare for my rollers kit. as well as the Ultimate Jungle Shaker, also from the Rollers Kit. And then I have this awesome Hades Atmospheric in the OG Jungle Sample Pack. Who recognizes that sound? And then finally, I have this vocal from the Flow Anastasia Vocal Pack. Awaken. And then finally, I have this Wobble Bass from the Mass Effects Preset Pack as a call and response. So let's hear the track in full. Pull up that tune. Oh yeah. I hope you guys enjoyed watching the three levels of creating the foghorn. Hope you guys enjoyed learning the three levels of mastering the foghorn bass sound. The trick is to learn how each waveform interact with each other. And once you get that, then learning about modulating different parameters such as volume, filter, and distortion. Also, wave shaping plays a key role in morphing your sound and adding more timbre and harmonics.
There's definitely more we can talk about in terms of the Foghorn, and I have a God Mode version of Foghorn, which we'll save for a future video. And let me know what you guys think of the Foghorn. Do you love it or hate it? And if you love it, which is your favorite Foghorn track? If you enjoyed this video and you want to see more videos like these, make sure you hit the like button and subscribe to my channel. All that helps my channel grow. Also, if you want to support what I do, you can pick up one of my products. I have a number of preset packs, sample packs, and Ableton templates to help you on your creative journey. You can learn more down in the links below. Check this video up here for my most popular Foghorn video. Also, check this video here to learn about the most popular Womp Jump Up bass sound. Anyways, that's pretty much it for today, guys. Thanks for watching, keep practicing, and I'll see you at the next video.